In this lesson, we're going to discuss stoichiometry problems with gases. So far, we've done stoichiometry problems with masses, grams. Start with grams of one substance and with grams of a different substance. Now we're going to talk about uh, gases. And in particular, uh, with gases, we work with volumes. So we'll start with the gas volume for one substance, and we'll want to end with a gas volume for a different substance. Uh, we're going to want to convert to moles as usual, and there's a couple of different things we're going to talk about with gas volumes. But when we want to switch between substances, uh, we're going to use that mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. That's where we get to use our coefficients. We might not want to end with moles. We might want to, say, go back to volume. And again, there'll be a couple different options for um, going from moles to uh, volume. And we'll talk about that in this video. So let's look at this problem. We want to know how many liters of nitrogen gas are produced if 50 liters of water vapor is produced at STP. Notice how these are both gases. And now we're talking about a volume. Uh, liters are a unit for volume. We also have something uh, called STP mentioned in this problem. So how do we go about solving this? You might remember something from unit two called the ideal gas law or PIVNERT. There's a relationship between volume and moles in the ideal gas law. We can have any set of temperature and pressure conditions uh, to substitute in to the ideal gas law. Remember, temperature has to be in Kelvin. And then that R value is the universal gas constant, uh, which you can look up based on your pressure and your volume units. So that's kind of one option you have uh, when you're working with moles and gas volume. There's another option, and this is where STP comes in. Uh, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure, and that's zero degrees Celsius, so we typically are not at a standard temperature, and one atmosphere, which is a more common um, pressure to experience. So if you have gases at STP at standard temperature and pressure, zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere, then the volume of one mole of any gas, doesn't matter what it is, is 22.4 liters. We call this molar volume. So we have molar mass, which is the mass of one mole. We get that from the periodic table. We also have something called molar volume. So this is the volume of one mole of any gas at STP. So it's 22.4 liters. That's the volume of one mole of any gas. This is based on something called Avogadro's hypothesis or Avogadro's law. Uh, basically, uh, we are independent of identity. doesn't matter what the gas is. It's going to occupy uh, the same volume um, as the uh, same quantity of any other gas. And so here we have one mole of any gas will occupy the same volume as one mole of any other gas. As long as the temperature and pressure are constant, and they always will be, we're never going to change temperature and pressure in the middle of a problem. So let's go back to that problem that we were just wondering about. Uh, we have 50 liters of that water vapor. We're going to start with what we know, just like a regular stoichiometry problem. I've got 50 liters of this water vapor to start with. I am going to put that over one to make it into a fraction. I'm going to go into my factor label. I want to get rid of those liters of water. And I'm going to go to moles. Right? Remember, we like to go to moles, so we can do our mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. That allows us to switch substances. So we are at STP. One mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. You definitely want to know that number. All right, so then here's our mole ratio. We're going to get rid of those moles of water and we're gonna to go to uh, moles of nitrogen. And looking at the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, one mole of nitrogen for every two moles of water. Okay, one more step. We don't want moles of nitrogen, we would like liters. So 
get rid of those moles of nitrogen. Now we're gonna go to liters of nitrogen. We are still at STP. One mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. Okay, so now let's look at the math. Uh, we've got 50 times one, times one, times 22.4 in the numerators. We've got one times 22.4 times two times one in the denominators. These 22.4s are gonna cancel. So we've got 50 divided by two. So we've got 25, let's do 25.0 liters of nitrogen produced. This leads us to a very important shortcut when we're dealing with gas volumes. Now this has to be for gases and we have to be talking about volume. So typically liters. According to Avogadro's hypothesis or Avogadro's law, one mole of gas is the same volume as one mole of any other gas, as long as the temperature and pressure are constant. So instead of a mole ratio for gases, we can do a volume ratio. We can say, I'm gonna cancel my liters of water vapor and go to liters of nitrogen. And um, I can say one liter here and two liters here. I can use my coefficients from the balance chemical equation. So instead of moles, I can do a volume ratio. This is for gases only. And you do not have to be at STP in order to use the shortcut. Now, do you have to use the shortcut? Absolutely not, but it will make a problem go very fast. Uh, we basically have, well, 50 in the numerator and two in the denominator, and as you know, predicted, we get 25 liters of nitrogen. Okay, so once again, this is for gases only, and we're doing a volume ratio instead of a mole ratio, so typically something with liters. So let's talk about um, gases and volumes. Um, if we are not at STP, not at standard temperature and pressure, you can see in this problem, we've got 0.953 atmospheres. We're supposed to be at one atmosphere for STP and we're at 35 degrees Celsius and we're supposed to be at zero degrees Celsius for STP. So uh, when we are not at um, STP, uh, we cannot use the 22.4 liters per mole as a conversion factor. So then your other option is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. That will get us a relationship between moles and volume. So let's take a look at what we've got. We've got four moles of gasoline. That's the C8H18. That's what we call octane. And we would like to know the volume of oxygen um, that would be uh, needed um, at a certain temperature and pressure. Um, and uh, it doesn't say what unit, so I'm gonna go for um, volume in liters. Uh, typically that's a, a pretty good unit. So I'm gonna start my factor label. And I already kind of have an idea about using the ideal gas law. And so we will just, um, Kind of get as far as we can and then we'll we'll move into the ideal gas law so we've got uh four moles of that c8h18 which i do want to cancel and i would like to go for uh moles of oxygen and we've got 25 for the coefficient for the oxygen and we have two uh for the coefficient for that octane um, that's about as far as I can go here. Uh, I've canceled my moles of um, octane and I have my moles of oxygen, but I would like volume. I'd like to end with liters. I cannot use that 22.4 liters per mole as a conversion factor here because I'm not at STP. And so I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna solve for my number of moles and then I'm gonna go into the ideal gas law. So yes, you can use the ideal gas law, rearrange it and use it as a conversion factor, but let's keep it simple. Um, so I've got four times 25 in the numerator. So I've got 100 divided by two. Uh, so that gives me 50 uh, moles of oxygen. 
So now that I know that, uh, I can go and use the ideal gas law. Uh, PV equals NRT. We've got a pressure of 0.953 atmospheres. We're gonna solve for our volume. Uh, we know our moles are 50, that's a lot of moles. And then we need to look up on the R value chart. What do we need for an R value when we've got atmospheres? And then we said we were gonna go for liters for our volume. Um, and that number is 0 0.0821. And then for the temperature, we need that to be in Kelvin. So remember, we're gonna take 35 degrees Celsius, we're gonna add 273 is how we get this converted into Kelvin. So that's 308.0 Kelvin. So then just do the algebra and solve for volume. And we get, well, I'm gonna round it to three sig figs because of the, um, well, the three sig figs that are in the numbers there. Um, so I'm gonna round that quite a bit. That's gonna be 1,330 liters rounded to three significant figures uh, for my final answer there. So when we're not at STP, uh, we're gonna use the ideal gas law, either for moles or for volume, just kind of depending on the problem. And so hopefully now you know how to do stoichiometry problems with gases.